So hi, good morning. Welcome to this another series of lecture about basic electrical theory. So in the last lectures, uh, we discussed what's the basic principles of voltage current resistance. How are we going to express the relationship if one uh, if the voltage increases, what will happen to current so on and so forth in a mathematical expression using the Ohm's law? And then we also discussed uh, basic uh, series circuits. What are their, their electrical properties in terms of voltage, current, and resistance? And then also with the parallel circuit. Now in this succeeding videos that we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss the problems okay, or basically the items that you will be taking when you will be having your uh, written assessment. However, there is a very slight difference on the given. Okay, We will be changing the given okay, to, really under, to really check if you've really understood what we've discussed in this uh, series lecture. So basically, the things that you're going to prepare when you will be uh, taking your examination will be a ball pen. It would be better if you have a scratch paper so that you can do your solving. And then, of course, a calculator. Okay? It would be a simple calculator will do. We will try to simplify our discussion using a simple calculator, not a scientific calculator. But of course, if you have scientific calculator, it would be uh, better. Now, let's discuss. Uh, we will be having six uh, series of lectures for the reviews, and then we will discuss 10 items. So basically, we will cover. 60 out of 70 items. Okay, this, the 10 items, uh, I will leave that 10 items to you. Just a very simple things uh, that we already discussed in the previous lectures. Okay, but there are some things, some basic objectives here that we have to reinforce. That's, for example, uh, in this question here, what do you call the material with lots of free electrons and commonly used as a pathway for uh, electrical installations? Okay, although we discussed some tube in the previous lecture, but we have to uh, we have to uh, make a thorough discussion on, on these three things here. The insulators, conductors, and then the semiconductors, okay, based on the previous elementary natin, in the elementary discussion. Insulators does not allow the flow of electrons at some point, okay, at some point. And then a conductors allows the flow of electrons. So that is why in this particular case here, the answer is a conductor. So it is a pathway for the electrons to flow. Okay, and then this semiconductor, semiconductor is basically, uh, we will discuss the semiconductor when we will be reaching the basic in electronics. Okay, semiconductors such as silicon, uh, germanium, and then gallium arsenide are normally used for uh, electronics devices, okay, such as diodes, transistors, so on and so forth. So basically, in the semiconductor, uh, we can adjust the conductivity of that particular material depending on the doping or something like that. So basically, the... Uh, the material among these insulators, conductors, and semiconductors will have a lot of free electrons will be uh, conductors in this, in this particular case. So as simple as that, so conductors. So let's proceed with number two here. Um, current flows in a circuit when a circuit is open, a circuit is closed. Take note, guys, uh, based on our previous discussion, we have to clarify it first. Okay, what do we define? How do we define current? If you are going to remember our first lecture on on what is current and we try to remember that the, a very big person okay that's the um, equivalent of the voltage or the electromotive force in our circuit and then we have a tube there and then we have a balls representing the electrons now based on, on that discussion current by definition is the flow or movement of electrons so if your move if your electrons are moving okay if your electrons are moving so there is a current okay so how are we going to do that so what will happen is if you have some, this is what we call the voltage or the EMF, okay? And then we have some tube again here, okay? Tube again here. And then we assume that we have some uh, electrons there, okay? If this particular uh, person is uh, getting some electrons there and then is responsible for moving these electrons, what do you think will happen if there is a gap here? Okay, what do you think will happen if there is... Oops, if there is some gap here, okay, if there is a gap here or there is an open path, okay, open path, the, the electrons now or these balls, these red balls here will not flow from this side here, from this part here to the other side. So if there is a stack, <laughs> if the electrons will stack, let's, let's just try to assume, if the electrons will stack here and cannot move to this direction here so there is what we call as an open circuit okay there is an open circuit so in this particular case here there will be no movement of electrons so if there are no movement of electrons there is no current in this particular case 
Okay? So, uh, how are we going to do it in, in an electrical way? So, for example, if we have a supply here, okay, and then we have some switch here, okay, we have some switch. So, of us, and of course, we, we have to put a load here. So, this is our load, okay? So, as of this moment, this switch here is closed. So, this switch here is closed. So, it means to say that uh, this, this voltage here, this EMF here, is pushing the electrons moving through in this particular loop here. Hence, in this particular case here, there is a movement of electrons. And then, so if there's a movement of electrons, there is a current, current in this circuit. So what do you think will happen if uh, this switch is turned off? If this turn off, hence, the current will not be able to flow based on this discussion here, based on this discussion here. So therefore, okay, therefore, if this is open here, let, let's, let's draw this one. Okay, so if this is open here, okay, if there is open and there is an open circuit here, there will be no current throughout this system, in this particular case here, throughout this loop. Okay, so that, that, that's the principle of this question to here. So, hence, a circuit flows in a circuit when the switch is, when the switch is closed. So as simple as that. If the switch is open, there is no current in that particular circuit. Okay? So let's proceed with the third question here. So which of the following describe a circuit breaker? So basically, a circuit breaker, when you will, uh, when you have experience working with the, uh, even in your home, in your home, there is a circuit, a panel board there, and then you have a circuit breaker there. Okay? A circuit breaker, and then that particular circuit breaker there, and then you have some, Okay, toggle there. Uh, okay, so, so, so some part of toggle there. So basically, the, the role of the circuit breaker is it trips, okay? It trips when there is an overload or overcurrent in your circuit, okay? So for example, if you use an appliances and then there was some problem with your appliances, so basically what will happen there is uh, it will go in a trip position, okay? It will proceed in a trip position and then the trip position of a circuit breaker is, is on the middle, okay, on the middle. So the trip here is, this is on the middle, okay, the off is here, and then this one here is the on. So basically, the, the, the goal there is, if you're going to on that one, the current will, have, will, will be able to flow, depending if you have a, 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 three, a three source, uh, R, RST source. So normally, uh, on board ship, especially on ships, or maritime education, so there are three RST there. So the, 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 the supply for that circuit breaker are three, the RST. So basically, if you are on this one, the current will flow, and then if it is off, the current will not be able to flow. Okay, so basically, the answer for this particular question here, uh, resetable protective device. Protective device, we also have a protective device such as fuse. However, the fuse, what happens with the fuse if there is a problem and then uh, there is an overcurrent, and then the current flowing in that particular path is above the rated current of the fuse. So, for example, if the rated current of the fuse is, let's say, uh, 220 amperes, okay, if this fuse is rated 20 amperes, and then if the current, if there is an, an overcurrent in the circuit, and then we expect that the current is more than the 20 amperes, let's say 30 amperes, or infinity, if there is a short circuit, a very surge amount of current, so this fuse here will uh, blow out, okay, will, will be blown out. Okay, so there will be an open circuit, and then this allowing the circuit to flow from the supply to the to the loads, hence protecting the fuse, uh, hence protecting the loads. But in this particular case here, if you're going to use a breaker, it will just uh, be in a trip position. Okay, so it is a resetable, meaning if after the trip position, you just have to turn it off, then check, and then rectify the problem. If you have some find a problem, then you can again turn it on. Okay, so that's the uh, circuit breaker. Okay, and then... Uh, number four, an ammeter is an electrical instrument used to measure, although uh, we have a multi-tester. A multi-tester is capable of measuring um, voltage, current, and resistance, but some multi-testers are only capable of measuring DC, small amount of DC current. Okay? So normally on board ship or even in industrial plants, when we are measuring the current flowing through a particular motor, we use the clamp meter. Okay, clamp meter. Basically, the concept is 
uh, there is some a magnetic flux around that particular uh, around that particular copper wire, and then if the current increases, the ma magnetic flux increases. So basically, that that's the point there. But in this particular case here, uh, the ammeter is used to measure current. Okay, ammeter from the word ampere, right? the, the the mnemonics there is ampere amps. Okay, so it it measures current for voltage, voltmeter. Okay, voltmeter, and then for the resistance, it is the ohmmeter. Okay, basically a multi-tester measures per current voltage and resistance. Okay, so let's proceed with uh, some examples here. Now, so most of the discussions that we are going to have, the succeeding discussions, will be problem solving. Okay, so prepare your calculator and then, okay, so take note, guys, to really check your understanding, all of the questions that we will be given in your uh, written assessment will be very similar to the questions that we will discuss here. However, we change some given. Okay, so you have to take note of that. Okay, so for example, in this uh, question here, uh, number five, an electric heater draws uh, 2.5 ampere from a voltage source. So the resistance of the heating uh, heating element is basically, so we have a voltage source here. So the voltage here, okay, let's, let's use another uh, color. Let's say color blue. Okay, and then uh, this problem here states that uh, the voltage is equal to uh, 110 volts. And then... The heater, that particular heater, so the current is equal to 2.5 ampere. So basically, the problem here is the resistance of that heating element. Okay? So how are we going to do that is you are going to use the Ohm's law VIR. So in this particular case, what we want to do here, what we want to find here is the resistance. So based on the previous discussion, so we just can cover this R here. Okay? Cover this R. So the formula for our uh, resistance to solve for the value of our resistance here is R is equal to the V over I. So the voltage here is 110 volts, and then the current here is 2.5 amperes. So just get your calculator, and then type 1110, oops, 1110, 110 divided by 2.5 volts. So that's 44. So is equal to 44. So as simple as that. Very simple as that. Okay, so next, so number six. So the formula to find I when the values of uh, V and R were known. So very simple. Let's go back again with our diagram here. Okay, draw again V, I, R. So to find the I, given the V and R, so you just have to cover that one. So the formula will be I is equal to V over R. So very simple, as very simple as that. Okay, so next is... Number seven. <laughs> so, uh, in this particular case here, uh, if this is the second time that you will be watching this video, it would be better is to pause for the video for a while and then try to answer the, the, the question again. Okay, so for example, uh, approximately how many milliamperes of current flow through a circuit with a 30 volt source and 6.8 uh, thousand, uh, 6,800 of resistance. So, in this particular case here, if you've already watched this video, pause this video first and then and, and then try to answer in your own. Okay, so if this is your first time, let's continue our solution here. Here, so how many milliamperes? So the question here is amperes. So based on the previous, uh, on the previous problem that we had, so that's to solve for the current, the current is equal to uh, voltage or over the resistance. So in this particular case here, the volts is equal to uh, thirty, and then the resistance in this particular case here is six point eight kilo ohms. Okay, so. It would be easier for us, okay? It would be easier for us to remember some things. So there are two options that we have here, okay? That we have here. So you can simply divide this one, 30 divided by 6.8, okay? And then you have to remember voltage, okay? You can put it in your notes. If the voltage divided by kilo ohms, the answer should be in milliampere. So as simple as that, okay? So voltage divided by a kilo ohms, is equal to milliampere. The unit is a milliampere. Because this is one in thousands. However, if you don't want to remember this one, okay, what you're trying to do here is, uh, let me put it in comparison. Okay. So if you don't want to remember this one, what you have to do is you have to divide the 30, the voltage divided by uh, 6,000, so 6.8 kilo ohms, that is 6,800 ohms. So that is 6,800 ohms. So this is voltage, this is ohm. So, you get your calculator and then divide this one, uh, 30 divided by 
6,800. Okay, so that is equal to 0.0044. So that is 0 0.044 uh, ampere. Okay, so if you want to convert this one again to, to milliampere, so what you're trying to do here is you have to move it to three decimal places. One, two, three. So each point here. So that will be equal to, so this is equal to 4.4 milliampere. So that's the answer. So however, if you will try to remember, okay, voltage, if the voltage divided by a thousand, okay, a thousand ampere, okay, so what will happen is the answer will be milliampere. So let's try to divide this one. Okay. So if you're going to divide this one, um, 30, just directly divide this one by uh, 6.8. So the answer will be 4.4. So you can get the answer directly. Just make sure to remember the unit for this uh, particular case. So 4.4 milliampere. So you, you can get the answer very directly without converting again from thousands to 1,000 and then and then uh, milliampere, okay, from ampere to milliampere. So you can get directly the answer just using your calculator, okay? So since take note, guys, that you will uh, be using, uh, the examination is time-bounded. So you are only given one hour to finish the exam, okay? So given that one hour, we have to finish your exam. If you can finish the exam, it will automatically submit. That is why we have to practice it. Uh, you, you have to practice problem solving a lot. Okay. So uh, you will, uh, yeah. So let, let, let's proceed first. So how much resistance is required? Okay. V very simple. Very simple Ohm's law. What is, how much resistance is required to limit the current, uh, the current from a uh, 9 voltage uh, battery to 2.6 milliamperes? Okay. So the problem here, so take note, uh, the resistor, resistor or resistance are normally used to limit the current in that particular circuit. It is normally used, uh, especially when you will be limiting the current for a limit uh, for a light emitting diode. So a limiting resistor should be placed there. Okay. So in this particular case here, uh, let's try to solve here. Okay. So a nine volts battery and then a two point six uh, milliampere. Okay. So in that particular case here, let's. Draw again that circle, V, I, R. So the question here is the resistance. Okay. The resistance. Oops. That's that one. This one. So the resistance. We want to find the value of that particular resistance there. Okay. So now uh, we have the formula R is equal to V all over I. Okay. So the voltage here is 9 volts. Okay. And then divided by 2.6 milliamperes. Okay, 2.6 milliamperes. So it would be better in this particular case here if you are going to convert this one, okay, if you are going to convert this one into amperes. But if you don't want to convert that one is in amperes, let's try to solve this one first if you are going to convert this one in amperes. And then later on, let's solve it in another way, okay? And then decide for yourself which is the better way for you, okay? So in this particular case here, 2.6 milliamperes, so let's convert this one into ampere first. How are we going to do that? Uh, based on our previous discussion, if this is a 2.6, you have to move your de your this decimal place to the left. So that is one, two, three. So this is now the, the new decimal place, and then you put some zero on the the holes. Zero, zero. So that is equal to 0 0.0026 uh, ampere. Okay. So in this particular case here, put it here. So it would be equal to 0 0.0026 ampere. So the good thing about this one here, if you are going to divide volts and then ampere, okay, V divided by A automatic, the answer will be ohms. Okay, so let's try to divide it here first. Okay, so 9 divided by 0 0.0026. Equals, so that is equal to, that is equal to uh, 3,000, 461.5 ohms. Okay? And then if we're going to convert this one again to, if you cannot find this answer in, in, the, in the choices, okay, in the choices, since your exam will be multiple choice, okay, so you have to, uh, you have to convert this one into kilo ohms. Okay? So you move again one, two, three, or in thousand, so that is equal to 3.46 uh, kilo ohms. 
Okay, so the other way, the other way is you have to remember again a a a a, a shortcut. Okay, so the shortcut here is based on our previous discussion here. Okay, based on our previous discussion here, if we divide, where is that? Okay, this one here. If you divide voltage into kilo ohms, so the answer will be milliampere. Okay, if you are going to cross multiply this one. If you divide voltage by milliampere, the answer is kilo ohms. Okay, you just have to to, to to remember that one. What what I'm trying to say here is, diba? if you have voltage divided by in the previous discussion milliampere, the answer will be kilo ohms. Okay, and then if you're going to cross multiply this one, okay, cross multiply that one, so it will have, okay, the resulting formula will be the voltage or the voltage divided by a kilo ohms. Okay, the answer will be in milliampere. Okay, so this is the same with the same with the formula uh, dimension in the previous uh, item. So in this particular case here, if we are going to do it this way, nine volts divided by two point six milliampere, you can simply divide the nine and the two point six, and then just try to remember that this is nine, and then this is milliampere. So the unit should be in uh, kilo ohms. Okay, so let's try to divide directly. The 9 divided by the 2.6 equals 3.46. So you just type this one, 3.46. So the answer is kilo ohms. So no need to go to the bothersome formula and converting from uh, milliampere to uh, milliampere to ampere and then ohms to kilo ohms. So if you can try to remember this formula here, or this method here is very, very, very uh, efficient. Okay, so that's it. Now we we only have last two remaining uh, last two remaining uh, problems that we have to solve before we proceed with the next lecture and then end this uh, current lecture here. Okay, so we will be discussing ten lectures, uh, ten questions per lecture. Okay, so let's proceed with uh, question number nine here. So for question number nine, what is the voltage source for a current carrying one ampere current, circuit carrying one ampere current through a 16 ohm re uh, resistor. Very simple. So before you you start solving first, if this is your first time again, again, so you have to pause this one and then you try to solve it on your own. But if this is your first time, uh, we we have to um, we have to start this one here. here. So so we have V I R. So the given here is we have this one, and then we also have the ohms. So we, we are given the ampere is equal to 1 ampere, the current, 1 ampere, and then the resistance will be uh, 16 ohms. So what we want to find here is the voltage. So the voltage, you have to put your finger here. Okay, so the voltage will be the voltage is equal to I times R. Okay, so the current here is 1 ampere, Okay, and then the resistance is 16 ohms. So the answer is 1 times 16, that is equal to 16 volts. Very, very simple. Okay? So, next is number 10. So, again, if this is your first time solving this problem, pause this, pause this video first and then try to answer on your own. Okay? This will help you prepare for your written examination. Okay? So, question number 10. So, if, of course, if this is your first time, you may proceed with the, with the lecture. Okay? So, how much voltage is needed to produce 1.5 ampere through a uh, 100 resistor? So basically, the problem is very, uh, very similar to the other problem. So uh, what you want to do here is what we want to do here is we really have to check if you really understood the problem. So we've given uh, 70 questions and then limited time, and then of course uh, the question focuses on the three things: the voltage, current, resistance, the Ohm's law, the series in parallel, which is the cover coverage for our basic electricity certification uh, certificate of completion. Okay, so number 10. Uh, how much voltage is needed for uh, 1.5 ampere? So again, the ampere is given. The current is 1.5 ampere given. And then the resistance is 100 ohms resistor. So basically, the problem is the same in our pro problem number 9. So again, if we're going to do that, voltage IR. So the voltage in this particular case here, the voltage current resistance. So the 1.5 uh, ampere times 100 ohms. So basically, the answer will be 150 volts. Okay? So 
If you have some questions or clarifications, please comment down below and I will try to answer your questions as soon as possible. So see you in the next uh, lecture.